let us look at several operations that preserve convexity we we'll look at a few basic ones the first is weighted summation so if fi is convex it implies that the weighted summation so let's say that i is from 1 to m so the weighted summation wi fi is also convex provided that wi's are greater than equal to 0 so the non negative weighted summation is convex this one is very easy to verify uh, the simplest verification that you can do is if you take the hessian of fi then the hessian of the positively weighted sum would also be positive semi definite if each of the hessians are positive semi definite then let us say that a function f is convex then of the function ax plus b is also convex so this is the affine transformation of the input right so this is also convex provided that provided that ax plus b is in the domain of f so this is well defined so as long as f of ax plus b is well defined f of ax plus b is also convex with respect to x right so a fine transformation of the input preserves convexity this is also uh, relatively simple to verify you can verify it for instance using the zeroth or first order condition or even the second order condition the third one is point wise maximum So this one is a slightly non-trivial and you will need some effort to understand and appreciate the result. The result says that suppose that fi is a set of functions let's say i equal to 1 to m which are all convex then g of x defined as maximum over i of fi of x. Right, so this is the pointwise maximum of the group of functions. So at every point x, I am calculating which of the function takes the maximum value and assigning that value to g of x. Right, so this function is also convex. Let us verify this using the zeroth order condition. So let's say that there are two points x1 and x2 which belong to domain of g note that in this case the domain of g is the intersection of the domain of fi right so these are all the points where each of these fi functions are defined so let's say x1 x2 are two points in the domain of g and let's calculate what happens to theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 so as per our definition this is equal to max over i f i of theta of x1 plus 1 minus theta of x2 so this is the pointwise maximum of these terms now observe that this is less than equal to so here what i can do is i can use the convexity of f i's Right? each of the fi's are given to be convex so this is less than equal to theta times fi of x1 plus 1 minus theta times fi of x2 note that because each of these inequalities holds so therefore the maximum over all i is also less than equal to the maximum over all i in the second term right so because each of the terms are less so their maximum are also follow the same inequality then then what is the next step so then we use the idea we have used this idea before also that if you have two sequences you are taking maximum over ai plus bi this is less than equal to maximum over i ai plus maximum over i bi right so please make sure that you understand this result 
So this result is taking saying that if I take the maximum of AI plus BI, then that is always less than equal to the maximum of individually of AI and of BI, summation of these two. Okay, this is always true generally because maximum of AI is the largest among AIs and maximum BI is the largest among BIs. So their sum is obviously greater than or equal to AI plus BI, which is largest among AI plus BIs. So this allows us to conclude that this is less than or equal to maximum over I FI of X1 plus 1 minus theta of maximum over I FI of X2. And this is nothing but 1 minus theta G of X2 and likewise this is theta times g of x1 so this whole thing is equal to theta times g of x1 plus 1 minus theta g of x2 which implies that g is convex so we have established that the point wise maximum defined like this is actually a convex function this result is very useful and we have used the zeroth order condition to verify this because generally gx may not be differentiable even if f are differentiable gfx may not be differentiable because it is the pointwise maximum so let's take a very simple example let's take let's say that each of these fi's are lines right so let's see these are several lines that are drawn like this right so this is f1 this is f2 this is f3 this is f4 and so on then what is their point wise maximum you can see here that this function is their point wise maximum so this is g of x the function drawn in red and you can see intuitively that it looks convex here okay so what I am saying here is that max over i ai transpose x plus bi right each of these fi's are ai transpose x plus bi this is a convex function right along similar lines by the way observe that what is the minimum so the minimum which is this one is so this is the minimum of fi is concave right so minimum over i ai transpose x plus bi is concave right so the reason for that is that each of these fi's are both convex and concave so their maximum is a convex function and their minimum is a concave function this kind of function which is like gx and the minimum function these are called piecewise linear right these are piecewise linear there are several pieces of linear functions joined together so piecewise linear functions of this form are convex which are defined as maximum of several linear functions or several affine functions let's take another example let's take the example of sum of r largest components sum of r largest components so let's say that g of x is defined as i equal to 1 to r x of i now this indexing is not the ith element but it is defined in this in the way that it is the ith largest element so this is the ith largest element okay so let's say that x1 would be the largest and if x is in rn then xn square bracket n would be the smallest so all others would be in between so this is the ith largest element and what we are doing here is we are summing g of x is the sum of 
r largest elements of x so you take a vector x in rn then you sort its entries take the r largest components add them up that is g of x and now this we are claiming that is a convex function so this is a convex function so how do we establish that or how do we prove that we need to use this property that it can be expressed as the maximum of several convex functions so what are those convex functions of which this is a maximum of so what i want to do is i want to express this as max over k f of k of x where k are some functions which are convex so how do i do that let us take f of k like this so let us take f of k of x as the sum of r components of x so you take the vector x take r of its components and let that be fk of x you sum them up and let that be fk of x now there are different ways in which you could take the r components you could take the first r components or last r components or some random r components so let the k index k denote the kth combination right so let this denote the kth combination uh, obviously there are how many combinations how many such k so k would be from 1 to n choose r right k would be from 1 to n choose r so there are n choose r possibilities in which fk can be constructed so let f1 to f n choose r be those functions right by the way when i say that this is the sum of r largest components i can also equivalently express it as j equal to 1 to r x of ij where i1 i2 till i r r r of the components so these are r numbers that belong to 1 to n such that i1 is not equal to i2 is not equal to i3 is not equal to i r right so these are r choices that we can make out of n right now what kind of function is this this you can see is a linear function of x right this is a linear function of x so in fact we don't even have to go all that way ago we can easily see that this is of this form this is ai transpose x plus b a and a k and b k can be chosen appropriately right so this is the maximum over k of some of our largest components of x and you can see that the largest of these fk's will be the one which where we choose the r largest components so we are choosing random r components the largest of these would be the one where i choose the r largest components okay so for instance let's take a simple example just for you to understand what is x1 plus x2 let's say that n is equal to 3 so you can see that x1 plus x2 is the maximum of x1 plus x2 x1 plus x3 x2 plus x3 right so no matter what x1 x2 take the largest first two largest two components their sum will be equal to x square bracket 1 plus x square bracket 2 so as you can see in this case this would be f1 f2 f3 there are three possibilities because 3 choose 2 is 3 and uh, all of these are linear and this is point wise maximum and hence this function is convex so i hope the example is clear it is slightly complicated example but please try to understand the fact that sometimes it is possible to express this point wise maximum function in very interesting ways
So here we have expressed it by using the linear combination of our components of x. This idea is actually applicable even if we are taking pointwise maximum over not only an index set, we can take pointwise maximum over an uncountable set. So that is called the support. So support function is defined as max over y in some set C such that x transpose y of x transpose y. Right. So instead of restricting ourselves to maximum over discrete indexes or integers, we are now taking maximum over a set C and this can be an arbitrary set C. So earlier C was of the form A1, A2 till AK. But now I am saying that C can be arbitrary. So for instance, an example of C is set of all A such that norm of A is less than or equal to 1. So the norm ball itself is a set and we are taking the maximum over Y belonging to this norm ball. So Y is any uh, vector which has norm less than or equal to 1 and that would be the support. So support of the norm ball would be this function and this is always convex. This is in fact convex regardless of what C is. C need not be convex here. C can be any arbitrary set. But this function is always convex, right? Because it is pointwise maximum. Just a technical note uh, for those of you who are familiar, uh, there is also this notion of supremum. Uh, in this course, we will not distinguish between them or you can say that we will just call maximum instead of supremum. So supremum is uh, taken whenever there is a possibility that the maximum value is not attained. Right? So in that case, supremum is taken, but here we are just going to use maximum just to avoid that confusion entirely. So the maximum includes scenarios where the maximum value is not attained. So like a maximum over an open interval. Right? So I just want to say that if I take maximum over an open interval, then I am defining it to be one like this. So even though x is never equal to 1, but the maximum is, so maximum is never attained. So 1 is never attained. But sometimes in mathematics, people call this supremum. But we can just say that whenever I say maximum, you can just assume that I include the supremum here. So that is some very simple basic operations on convex sets. We'll see a more complicated and more general operation later.